Today, we are going to talk about an important topic, which is caring for one another in the Lord. Uh, we already talked about the need to accept one another, you know, to trust each other in the Lord. Also, to commit ourselves, you know, to a uh, community of faith. At hindi lang yung parang we are there to listen or siguro par participate lang sa mga tinatawag na worship service. But we're willing to commit ourselves. We're willing to get connected, no? And to stand by each other, ika nga, on the long haul. Hindi lang yung minsanan lang. But uh, we are really willing to say na, I'm with you in this, you know. We're willing to journey together in the Lord. That's why itong series na ito is called Real Life Journey. So, this is the series na magandang pag-usapan after uh, knowing and understanding the gospel. So, if you go to our website, rlcc.ph, you will see there under the at the uh, menu tab called Discipleship. Pag kinlik nyo yun, you would see some courses that we hope people would go through as part of their discipleship. Una-una na dyan yung Real Life Bible Study which is a four lesson uh, study kung saan we you know we lay down what it means to be a christian ano yung gospel uh, and ano ba ang faith and ano ba dapat gawin initially so yung uh, bible study na yun is intended to help people to make a decision to begin yung real life journey and so pagkatapos noon we want people to go through the real life journey and you're listening right now uh, to a new version that i'm creating uh, that is intentionally uh, focused on joining a community of faith. So, if a person um, uh, wants to be part of a small group no, of RLCC or being part of a community, uh, we want them to go through this uh, series para maunawaan nila what it means to really walk together and to journey together in the Lord. So, we are now in session 5 dito sa ating pinag-uusapang real life journey. And uh, we want to talk about itong caring for one another in the Lord, which is so important in building up each other no? in Christ uh, sa loob ng isang community of faith. Uh, this cannot be simply assumed. Uh, this must be learned and this must be pursued. So, our passage today is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 21 to 26. Um, and uh, let's read it. It's from the uh, the pen of uh, the Apostle Paul or St. Paul, as some people might call him. And uh, basahin natin to, uh, starting with verse 21. Then let's pray and then we'll dive into our ating devotional. Uh, starting with uh, verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts uh, that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 21 to 26. Will you join me right now in prayer? No, Manalangin po tayo sa Panginoon wherever you might be. Uh, maybe you're drinking coffee or sitting somewhere. Would you just be mindful of the presence of the Lord? Uh, we are, of course, in the presence of the Lord. Kasi sabi sa word of God, when two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So we can actually put our faith uh, dun sa reality na yun, that we are actually in the presence of the Lord right now. So tayong lahat po ay yumuko at pumikit at manalangin. Lord, maraming salamat sa iyo, Panginoon, for your grace upon us, for giving us a good night's sleep, for those of us in Asia, of course. Um, for others, Panginoon, maraming salamat for the strength that you give uh, that you gave them uh, for the whole day, na kanilang mga activities. 
uh, regardless of our time zone, Panginoon, we want to express our gratitude, our uh, thankfulness for your mercy upon us, uh, for keeping us uh, strong and healthy. We know that may, there are many people who are suffering, Panginoon. Uh, there are a lot of people who are sick. And I pray that we would be uh, uh, mindful of them as well. Now, we would not forget that there are many people who are suffering. May we learn how to live not just for ourselves, Panginoon, uh, but also for others. And uh, Lord, dito sa pag-uusapan namin, I pray you would give us the grace to really understand uh, your work sa puso namin to really transform us to be like you um, who is truly caring, Lord God. Uh, we want to be like Jesus who went around doing good. And I pray now we would become like that, Panginoon, that we would be a people who would be interested in really doing good to one another. So maraming salamat po, Lord. We commit to you itong time namin to meditate on the Word of God. And I pray that you would guide our thoughts, our conversation dito, and uh, help me, use me, Panginoon, by your grace. So that, Lord, uh, I would be able to truthfully uh, expound on the Word of God, uh, not adding to it or subtracting to it, but really communicating the intent uh, of what you desire for us to understand. Salamat po, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. So, purihin ang ating Panginoon. Welcome everyone once again. Now, um, Paul is writing this to... Uh, Several churches in Corinth, you know, it's, an, it's a place doon sa uh, Mediterranean, of course, doon sa lugar na yun, uh, where Christianity uh, started, you know, uh, first in Jerusalem and then, you know, in concentric silk circles, it uh, spread out to, to the then known world, you know. And uh, of course, Corinth is one of those places, it's, it's a cosmopolitan city. Uh, parang kubaga, parang Metro Manila or maybe Chicago, siguro. It's a city where a lot of people are, uh, you know, living. And uh, there are Christians there. So, he's writing to them. Basically, and marami silang problema doon. Uh, but one of their problems is, of course, their tendency to be self-oriented, which is, of course, common namo. Lahat naman sa atin. Uh, we are born with that tendency to only think of ourselves. Or at least yung parang immediate circle lang natin, yung family natin. But not really beyond that. Uh, it takes the grace of God for us to really consider others, you know, uh, uh, better than ourselves. You know? In a sense, now we're thinking of them, not just of ourselves. Now, dito, he wrote uh, these words to them because of their problem, yung kanilang pagiging self-centered. So, sabi ni Paul, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, uh, I don't need you. Now, we want to talk about caring for one another in the Lord. And it means at least two things, you know. One is uh, on a negative side, not to intentionally hurt each other. Or in other words, not to intentionally do harm. And then on the other hand naman, uh, to care for one another is to intentionally do good. So yung dalawa na yun are two sides of the same thing, which is really to care for one another. And like I said, this is not something that is natural sa ating lahat. Uh, what is natural for us is to care for ourselves, for sure. Di ba? Naalagaan naman natin sarili natin, uh, you know, generally speaking, I hope. Uh, and also, siguro willing tayo to care for those who are in our immediate circle, our families, or at least those who actually care for us as well, di ba? So we care for them uh, in return. But beyond that, really caring for those na, you know, lalong-lalo na wala namang ginagawa para sa'yo, or people who may not really benefit you in some way, well, you know, caring for them uh, might be you know, really too much to ask or to expect. That's why it takes the grace of God for us to be able to become that kind of people. Now, we are, you know, we are willing to go out of our comfort zone, willing to be inconvenienced, to show care for others, 
even though they may not be able to care for us in return, or we may not really benefit from that, uh, it's simply out of the goodness of our hearts uh, that God transforms us so that we can become caring people. Now, when you think about a community of faith, gaya ng sinabi ko nga na we have to learn how to accept each other, no? And then uh, trust each other and commit ourselves to each other toward the journey of faith. Foundationally on. But practically speaking, what do we do once we are actually journeying together? Let's say, for example, which is our typical experience being in a small group. Uh, Sempre, we you know, go through the journey together. Uh, we meet siguro once a week and hopefully beyond that, sana, we, are, we have some kind of interaction. And so, what are we actually going to do in order for us to be built up together in the Lord? Sempre mahalaga yung pag-accept, yung pag-trust, at pag-commit sa isa't isa bilang foundational yan sa ating relationship within the body. Pero practically speaking, what do we actually do sa isa't isa to build up one another? Well, you know, that's what we want to talk about. And the first thing that we really need to understand is we need to care for each other. And caring, of course, is not just simply meeting once a week. Caring goes beyond that. And that's why I think a lot of people miss out on the beauty and the blessing of being in a community of faith because they only think of it as parang a meeting. When you think of a church uh, or a fellowship or a group, a small group, as simply parang a meeting, then you would not really experience uh, the wonderful blessing of uh, being connected with others in Christ Jesus. Kailangan maunawaan natin na it goes beyond the meeting. It is not simply just meeting together. And of course, it goes beyond simply just, uh, you know, fellowshipping one another over donut or coffee. It really goes beyond that. Kaya nga kailangan ng commitment doon eh, no? Uh, kailangan may willing tayo to really be engaged, no? To the process of doing life together. Which is of course demanding and sometimes people don't want that kasi they don't want to be uh, siguro disturbed. Because they have other concerns, yung sarili nila, yung buhay nila, yung career nila. And so doing life together with others can be such a distraction siguro or maybe parang istorbo sa mga gusto natin gawin sa buhay. And of course that's understandable dahil, uh, uh, you know, it's really not natural sa atin to even be concerned about other people. But by the grace of God, I do believe na ito yung nice gawin ng Panginoon sa atin. He wants to transform our hearts so that we may become like Him in this world according to our uniqueness. Now, we would be able to display the character of God. And uh, what is really the character of God? If we're going to sum it up uh, in one word, that's love, diba? God is love. The Bible is clear about that. The main characteristic of God, you know, that really uh, exemplifies who he is, is love. And that's why the greatest commandment is to love God, you know, with all our hearts, with everything that's within us, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So, really, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, you know, and the greatest is love. So, uh, the point is that um, we are really called by God and we are being saved by God on a daily basis so that we may learn how to live a life of love. If we put that, you know, in a simple ano, uh, term. Na tinatransform tayo ng Panginoon so that we may become loving people. And so, as we look at this passage, Paul is really talking about that. In fact, Pagkatapos ng chapter 12, we know na ang susunod dito is chapter 13. And what is chapter 13? Well, that's the love chapter, di ba? Tinatawag natin na love, which we all uh, have heard about, you know, many times, lalo na sa mga weddings, di ba? Um, and so, it describes the nature of love. Now, you see, this, this is chapter 12. And so, this goes before chapter 13, which means we are being really prepared, you know, to think about love as the the number one thing na dapat na de-develop sa puso natin bilang followers of Christ. 
And um, and so when Paul says here, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the, ha the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. You know, we begin to be aware here of something na kailangan natin matutunan, you know. Uh, yung pag sinabi natin caring for one another, it, it really means first and foremost that we intentionally do not hurt each other, you know. And hurt has to do with either rejecting each other, you know, or somehow, you know, minsan we are even, you know, parang attacking each other or causing harm sa isa isa. Well, definitely sa buhay natin because we're not perfect. There will be times na maaaring siguro hindi natin sinasadya makaka-offend tayo o makakasakit tayo ng isa't isa. But we should not intentionally do that. And how do we intentionally do this? Well, una-una kasi some of us merong mga problem sa issue ng anger, no? We have anger issues. Kumbaga, hindi tayo self-aware sa anger natin, sa disappointment natin sa mga tao, yung disapproval natin sa kanila. And so, we express that, express that in so many different ways. Maybe, siguro, with uh, yung classic look of disdain, di ba? Or disapproval na pinapakita natin. Ginagawa natin sa pamilya natin, sa mga tao na malapit sa atin. We look at them in such a way na we make them feel ashamed of themselves. Dahil nagdi-disapprove tayo sa kanila. Or sometimes, we might even say it out loud, no? Sa words natin. That we actually tell them, you know, I don't need you, you know, get out of my life. Now, unfortunately, you know, uh, when we become Christians, we are not immune to this. Hindi ito parang uh, unthinkable. It is actually happens. That's why si Paul, when he is talking about this, sabi niya na, you cannot say to one another, I don't need you, no? That's not um, in line with God's will. And yet, it happens all the time in many different ways. We may not say it, for example, pero we actually act on it. We say, in effect, to people without really saying anything, actually, sa behavior natin, that I don't need you, no? Get out of my life, or I don't care about you. Uh, you, can, you might as well not exist, and it won't bother me. Yung ganong klase mga attitude, unfortunately, no, ay nakikita natin sa mga tao. And whether matanda o bata, meron tayong mga behaviors sa isa't isa that basically hurts each other, you know, we're rejecting one another. We're actually saying, you know, I don't need you, okay? So, some people na may mga anger issues, you know, madali nilang ipakita yun through their body you know, language na they don't care about you, they would either walk away or whatever. And then, merong mga tao, of course, who are so full of themselves and that all they think about is themselves, you know, and they're so emo, no? Pag hindi mo sila na, hindi mo na meet yung needs nila, well, they will make it uh, really clear to you that they don't need you and they would reject you in some way. Others naman, you know, because of their, siguro, insecurities and fears, uh, they may try to make you feel, you know, that uh, they need you, but actually, you know, the moment the uh, uh, merong konting pagsubok, they would withdraw yung care na yun. So, there are many different ways that we can intentionally hurt one another. And so, to care for one another, you no, know, is something na kailangan natin i-work out by the grace of God. We have to practice certain things dito. And so, in the, in the small group, siguro, uh, if we don't really intentionally do it, we would, by nature, intentionally hurt each other. Yung simple lang na hindi tayo magkukumustahan in between meetings is already a sign that we are actually uh, committing this problem, no? Uh, kung tayo ay magkikita lang at mag-uusap lang during our schedule, kunyari once a week or Friday night or whatever, but all throughout the week, we don't really express any kind of concern for one another. Then it's tantamount to saying, now, well, I don't really need you, di ba? Uh, imaginein mo na in your family, you would tell them, you know, kakausapin ko lang kayo or magkakaroon lang tayo ng interaction once a week, okay? For maybe two hours, then kakausapin ko kayo. But for the rest of the week, please do not bother me. That would be unthinkable, di ba? Imagine saying that to your spouse. 
Okay? Now, of course, you might say, tell me now, well, pastor, iba naman yun, asawa naman yun sa kapamilya. Yeah, I know, that's true. And I'm not saying naman na kailangan araw-araw, eh, di ba, uh, we would make some effort to show care for one another. Pero at least naman, it should be beyond just meeting each other once a week, di ba? Because we want to really make each other feel na meron siyang value, right? And so as we read this, sabi sa verse 22, on the contrary, uh, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. Well, in other words, you know, it's really our intentional actions no, that define yung ating caring for one another. Sabi pa niya rito, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. Well, he's saying, so he's making an observation of what is really, is really true naman talaga sa pang araw-araw when it comes to our physical bodies, di ba? Uh, you know, bibigyan natin ng uh, special concern, you know, yung mga parts ng bodies natin, of course, that are hidden from others. Um, but uh, at the same time, siyempre, meron tayong mga magaganda namang parties sa ating katawan uh, that we are quite confident with and so we don't really bother much about that. Uh, but, you know, what Paul is talking about dito is the yung concern, no? Kaya sabi niya, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Equal concern, sa isa't isa. We must actually intentionally pursue doing good or blessing one another in the Lord. And what does that mean? It means, first of all, na I need to be aware beyond myself kung ano yung mga needs ng mga tao. Now, I may not be able to do this with everyone, but at least, you know, with just a few people that I have committed myself to, at least man lang doon, you know? I may not be able to bless the whole world, and God does not expect me to do that. So God puts me in a community of faith, a smaller circle, and so, um, what does it mean to care for one another? It means that I would prayerfully and sensitively uh, seek out to know kung ano yung needs ng mga tao, I mean, beyond myself, beyond my own uh, concerns. And um, being aware, of course, of the needs of others, you know, is a manifestation of a transforming heart. Dahil sa totoo lang, it's quite unnatural for anybody to even think of the needs of other people. But by the grace of God, as the Lord transforms us, as we become more and more like Him, yun nga, as we really practice the habits of grace, and as we frequent yung mga places of grace, we develop and we grow in character, you know, like that of Jesus. So, to intentionally care for one another is to be aware. Now, sometimes we can just be aware uh, of the needs of other people, siguro accidentally, kasi maybe nakikita natin sa post nila, or we are observing, or maybe it might be talagang intentionally they would tell us, oh, please pray for me, ganito yung nangyayari sa buhay ko. Either way, being aware of other people's needs, you know, is the beginning of caring for one another. And of course, from there, we try to do what is beneficial to meet that need. In other words, we try to do good. No, uh, we, we want to be uh, a channel of blessing ng Panginoon sa mga tao. So, we try to meet that need according to the grace of God na meron tayo. You know, the Lord is not asking us to do anything na hindi naman natin, wala tayong capacity to, to actually do. But, of course, we trust God beyond our capacities. Pero, we try to meet that need. Now, some of you siguro, uh, you might have heard of the um, uh, five languages, di ba? Uh, or five love languages as, the, is, is, as it is called. Now, of course, I don't really believe now, well, you know, you should only meet other people's needs according to your love language. But I think merong insight dun sa ano na yun, uh, work na yun, o sa uh, mensahe na yun. Now, basically, it means na ang mga tao kasi iba-iba. And so, therefore, you know, people need different things, you know. And so, we have to be parang sensitive about that and really pray. 
Sometimes ang kailangan lang ng isang tao is our presence. Uh, hindi naman tayo kinakailangan dumaldal, you know. It's just being there. Uh, letting them know that we are present, that we are, that we understand. And some people siguro need a hug, you know, which right now hindi possible because of the pandemic. Pero may mga taong ganun, they just want a, a physical touch, di ba? Uh, there are people na kailangan nila ng conversation. Gusto so, nila merong makausap. And there are of course uh, some people who might prefer siguro some kind of gesture, no, that uh, shows that you remembered them, for example, sa birthday nila or sa anniversary. One of the things that I try to do uh, to show care for people is through social media by looking at what others are posting. Uh, and if I see na, you know, they are celebrating a birthday or anniversary o kaya nagkaroon sila ng successful na accomplishments sa buhay, then I try to recognize that, you know, hindi lang simply by liking it, by really making an effort dun sa Facebook group ng RLCC uh, to let them know na I saw it and I am aware of it and binabati ko sila sa birthday nila o sa anniversary nila. Now, I, I'm doing that to set an, ex, an example. Unfortunately, wala pa masyadong sumusunod sa akin doon sa example na yun. Meaning to say, I'm the only one who's actually uh, taking that initiative. But how I wish na yung mga tao, and this would be such an encouragement siguro sa akin, if I can see people na on their own, they would post and say, Happy birthday so-and-so or, you know, greeting kay ganito mag because they are celebrating their anniversary. It just shows lang siguro na wala pa tayo doon. But that's my prayer. Na hindi lang ako yung nagpo-post doon sa Facebook group uh, para sabihin na happy birthday si ganito o ganyan. You know? But everybody is doing their part. Even here sa daily devotions. I'm encouraged misan when some people would say na please pray for me ganito, ganyan. And then somebody would respond, you know, I'm praying you know, <laughs> for this. I'm praying for you, sister. For me, that's a really a good effort no, toward caring for one another. But of course, we can go beyond that, diba? Sabi nga ni uh, Paul sa verse 26, If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. So one way that we can intentionally care for one another is maging aware tayo if there's any kind of suffering sa buhay ng mga kapatiran. And of course, I don't mean to say lang in general, but really, more specifically, lalo na if you're committed to your small group, you maging aware kayo sa isa tisa. That's why I really believe na ang bawat small group should have two things talaga. One is, meron silang place of communication or getting, you know, uh, connecting with each other. And then meron silang place of meeting. Dalawa yung importante sa kahit anong small group eh. A place na pinagkasunduan nila where they will connect with each other, you know, in between are their meetings. And then a place of meeting. Now, it could be the same thing. For example, messenger. That could be a place for, you know, con contacting each other and saying hello to one another. And informing each other of uh, any needs na meron. And then maybe that's also the same place kung saan kinukondak yung meeting ninyo online. Messenger, no? For example lang. Others, they, they do it differently, no? Sa Zoom sila nagmi-meeting. But uh, every community should have two play, two things. One is a place kung saan they can actually uh, communicate with each other. And we'll talk more about communication sa susunod. But uh, there, there, must, there must be a place kung saan we can inform one another what's going on in each other's life. And so, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Which means that we need to get to know each other and give each other the opportunity to, to know kung ano yung nangyayari. So, we communicate our needs. No? And then, sabi nga rito, if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So we're not just, we just don't want to be aware of the suffering. We also want to be aware uh, of the celebrations, of the things that we need to rejoice with. So caring for one another means intentionally really blessing each other. So it requires two things. One is, you know, not intentionally hurting each other, but also intentionally caring or doing good to one another. Now, if a group would do this, say, isa it would surely grow. 
it will become a very strong and vibrant community of faith kung saan it's really a blessing to be a part of it. Now, of course, it really depends on every member of that group. If you belong to a small group, tapos yung small group na yun are not exhibiting itong caring for one another, it could be, of course, na baka foundational yung issue, walang acceptance, walang trust, walang commitment. That could be the really the main problem. Pero sometimes mayroon namang acceptance and mayroong trust and mayroong commitment. Kaya lang hindi pa marunong how to care for each other. Kung mayroong ganun, if you're part of that group, you should be the one to voice it out and let people know. You know what? You know what? You know, uh, guys, ganun. I noticed na nagkikita lang tayo, nag-uusap lang tayo once a week. Pero in between meetings, we don't reach out, we don't communicate, we don't pray for each other, we don't let each other know what's going on, uh, if there's anything na kailangan natin sa isa't isa. See, sometimes we just have to voice it out. At hindi yung tahimik lang tayo, o kaya madi-discourage tayo, o madi-disappoint lang tayo, sabihin natin na, o yung grupo ko, wala namang pakialaman. And don't accuse people of that. Do something about it. You know? Because the, the quality of your of the community that you belong to does not simply depend upon others or yung leader. It really depends upon everybody. Everyone should invest their time, talents, and treasure para maramdaman ng bawat isa that there is real care for one another. And this is a journey. This is a journey, mga kapatid. This is not something that happens overnight. And there are many challenges dito. Because we, it's not natural for us to really care beyond our immediate families or even yung beyond those that uh, we consider our friends who care for us. Actually, caring for one another is uh, the very character of God Himself. Diba? Because God is love. Eh? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In other words, you know, uh, it's the nature of God to uh, go beyond, you know, himself to really do good for others, to to save people. So, tayo rin ganun eh. We should really learn uh, how to display the character of God. And that is, of course, dependent upon our walk with the Lord. Kung hindi tayo nag-walk with God, I don't think it would be possible for us to even care for others beyond ourselves. It's really the work of grace sa buhay natin. And so that's why I always say na very crucial yung personal walk ng bawat isa with the Lord on a personal level before you can even see them doing anything uh, that is beneficial for the community of which they are a part of. So I don't really expect everyone actually to show yung care na yan because some people, because of their lack of personal growth in faith and in their walk with God, Malabo yun that they would actually even think of other people. That's why we need to encourage one another. We need to teach each other. No? Dapat magtulungan tayo to grow in faith. Instead of simply parang telling people, Oy, dapat gawin mo to, dapat gawin mo yan. It doesn't really happen by, uh, by any kind of force or legalism. Yung pagkakaroon ng concern for one another is really the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that just simply happens kasi we demand it on other people. So, huwag tayo magsisihan. Huwag natin sabihin itong mga taong ito walang care sa iba. Huwag tayong ganun. Because again, we're showing instead yung rejection. Let's not shame each other. Let us help one another. Kaya nga napakahalaga ng equipping each other in the Lord and teaching one another the truth. So, kinakailangan kasi matutunan ng mga tao to practice the habits of grace so that their hearts may be transformed. So, if you're in a small group at nakikita natin na walang caring for one another, huwag tayong magalit at huwag natin pagalitan yung mga tao. Let's help each other grow in the Lord. Kasi yun ang susi doon. Kasi if we are growing in our faith, of course, by the grace of God, as He works in our hearts, we will be transformed. Kaya pag nakakita ko ng isang grupo that are really caring for one another, for me, that's a sign that these people are really growing in their faith. Kasi really, the fruit of yung, ano natin, yung walk natin with the Lord is love. And yet, pag nakakita ko ng isang grupo na walang pakialamanan, basta nagmi-meet lang sila, Bible study, pero they don't really care for each other, 
Well, I would, maaaring marami silang kaalaman, but they really don't know what they need to know. Because really, the proof of our maturity is the love that we show. And so, I definitely believe na kailangan natin matutunan, no? Yung caring for each other. And this is the work of grace in our lives. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. But always remember, when we care for each other, we build up one another. So when we care for each other, we build up one another. So if you want to really be part of a, you know, a uh, community of faith that is vibrant and alive, kapatid, you know, two things na kailangan mong gawin. One is not intentionally hurt your brothers and sisters in the Lord by your words, by your judgmental spirit. Don't hurt them intentionally, but instead, intentionally do good to them. Be sensitive sa kanila mga pangangailangan. And by the grace of God, ask the Lord to use you to meet those needs. Now, that would take some time bago maging natural yan sa iyo. But we can begin right now. If you are a part of a small group ngayon, maybe think about the needs of the members of that group or at least one of them, and then ask yourself, anong pwede kong magawa to meet that need? Now, it may not be successful kasi hindi naman lahat ng tao are willing to be helped. Minsan, kahit sabihin mo sa tao, how can I pray for you? Minsan, dead ma lang, they would not respond. But it's alright. Learning how to care for one another is a journey of faith. So begin there, you know. And then, don't in, don't intentionally hurt people. Minsan tayo, mahilig tayo manermon. You know, may, minsan mahilig tayo mag-correct ng mga tao. But we don't want to see ourselves in the mirror. Instead of finding faults sa mga tao, ask yourself, are you becoming more and more a caring person who does not think only of himself or herself, but are willing to ikang, uh, do, go the extra mile? You know, uh, are you willing to be that kind of person na hindi lamang, you know, uh, gagawin lang what is convenient? But you can actually be inconvenient. Uh, you know, you're willing to be the, to be, to go out of your comfort zone. Yan ang mga dapat na mangyari sa buhay natin. By the grace of God, it can happen. So let me pray for everyone. Hindi pa tayo tapos sa pinag-uusapan natin, but... I hope na nakikita po natin ito, that we should grow in our faith and in our love for each other. So, manalangin tayo. Panginoon, um, salamat po, Lord, for reminding us that we need to learn how to care for one another. Na ang Christian life ay hindi lang yung paatin atin ng worship service, pakinikinig lang ng sermon. It's really all about learning how to live a life of love. So, for those of us, Panginoon, na maaaring malayo pa sa ganito, Lord, continue to work in us to develop yung character namin. And uh, for some of us who are already doing this, Lord, I praise God, may each one persevere and not give up. Lalong lalo na kung wala namang response na nangyayari, it's alright, Lord, teach us to love, not because we want to be loved back, but simply because that is who you are and that is what you're doing in our lives, Panginoon. Now, for others, Lord, na malayo pa, na hindi man lang nila naiisip how to care for others, Lord, tulungan mo sila that they may understand that this is what you desire for each one of us, that we would truly care for one another in the body of Christ. So that, uh, Lord, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Nawa magkaroon kami ng equal concern for each other in the Lord. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen.